Welcome to Hong Kong Brief. The content of the briefing includes Tesla Cybertruck to go on tour in China to burnish tech cred. Hong Kong closing Asian cup gap but attacking quality missing, Anderson says. Bridgewater says China stock sell-off made valuations attractive. TikTok cuts 60 jobs in sales and ads as tech layoffs continue. Hong Kong stocks rally as Alibaba surges 5% amid insider buying, China support. Tesla Cybertruck to go on tour in China to burnish tech cred. Bloomberg. Tesla plans to showcase its Cybertruck during a promotional tour of China to boost sales and compete against domestic manufacturers such as BYD. The tour will include stops in Shanghai, Beijing, Shenzhen, Chengdu, Nanjing, Hangzhou, Xi'an, and Chongqing. Tesla has also set up an online vote for where it should stop after the first leg of the tour. The automaker is making efforts to retain its position in China's electric vehicle market, including price cuts and refreshed designs. Growth in China's EV market is projected to slow in 2024 due to the nation's recovery from the pandemic. Tesla sold 1.81 million vehicles globally in 2023, with over half of them shipped from its Shanghai factory. Hong Kong closing Asian cup gap but attacking quality missing, Anderson says. South China Morning Post Hong Kong's coach, Jorn Anderson, has said that his team will continue to close the gap on the continent's big guns after their Asian Cup campaign ended with defeat by Palestine. Hong Kong put in a strong performance against Iran, but Anderson admitted that his side were down on energy in the match against Palestine. Despite the loss, he believes that Hong Kong had a good tournament and closed the gap to the bigger teams. Anderson also expressed concern over the two-month break before their World Cup qualifiers in March, as players will be returning to their clubs. Bridgewater says China stock sell-off made valuations attractive. Bloomberg. Bridgewater Associates recently told investors that it was moderately bullish on Chinese stocks due to the attractive valuations provided by the stock market route. The company's China private fund management arm also said that it was moderately bullish on bonds, as policy was expected to remain accommodative and interest rates to fall. However, these comments were made just before China's stock markets fell again. Bridgewater's cautiousness came before President Xi Jinping unveiled his financial policy focus, which emphasized party control and regulatory scrutiny, and Beijing failed to issue stronger monetary policy support. TikTok cuts 60 jobs in sales and ads as tech layoffs continue. Bloomberg TikTok, owned by ByteDance, has cut around 60 jobs, primarily in its sales and advertising division. The layoffs, affecting positions in Los Angeles, New York, Austin, and overseas, account for less than 1% of the company's U.S. workforce. Other technology companies, including Alphabet and eBay, have also recently made job cuts. Despite scrutiny over its Chinese ownership and alleged links to Beijing, TikTok continues to grow and has a large audience in the U.S. In March 2019, the app had 150 million American users and became the first non-game mobile app to generate $10 billion in consumer spending. Hong Kong stocks rally as Alibaba surges 5% amid insider buying, China support. South China Morning Post Hong Kong stocks rose to a one-week high for the second day in a row, with the Hang Seng Index increasing 1.4% to 15,569.73. The Hang Seng Tech Index also rose 1.8%. The rally was driven by a 5.2% surge in Alibaba Group shares, following news that Chairman Zhou Tsai and co-founder Jack Ma had bought millions of dollars worth of the company's shares. Tencent and NetEase also saw gains after Chinese authorities reversed a proposal to tighten the video gaming industry. Meanwhile, the China Securities Regulatory Commission pledged to calm the market and Premier Li Chang urged officials to take measures to calm investors. Jack Ma, Zhou Tsai replaced SoftBank as Alibaba's largest shareholders. South China Morning Post Jack Ma and Zhou Tsai, 
co-founders of Alibaba Group, have increased their stakes in the company, becoming the two largest shareholders. Ma purchased around $50 million worth of Alibaba stock in Q4 2023, raising his stake beyond the reported 4.3% at the end of the year. Sai paid $151.7 million for 1.957 million Alibaba shares during the same period. Their buying spree demonstrates their confidence in the company's ability to turn around its fortunes following recent regulatory challenges and a plunge in stock price. Most Japanese do not have friendly feelings towards China, poll shows. South China Morning Post Less than 13% of Japanese people have positive feelings towards China, according to a government poll. The survey found that 86.7% of respondents held negative feelings towards China, with many expressing concerns about China's aggressive moves in the South China Sea, Taiwan, and the disputed Senkaku Islands. However, respondents emphasized that they did not dislike Chinese people and held positive feelings towards Chinese cuisine, history, art, and culture. The negative feelings were primarily aimed at the Chinese government and Communist Party. Hedge fund stars who got China wrong are paying a big price. Bloomberg The demise of hedge fund Asia Genesis Asset Management serves as a warning to China bulls, according to a report in Bloomberg. The hedge fund has closed after large losses on wrong-way bets on Japan and falling Chinese markets, which it said were largely the result of inaction by policymakers. Shua Soon Hock, head of Asia Genesis, said in a letter to investors that his confidence as a trader is lost, marking a significant change of heart, as recently as last month he was extolling the virtues of China on LinkedIn and was super bullish. Shanghai Banksia Investment Management Center also suffered its worst annual loss in 2015 since at least 2009, while the value of T. Rowe Price's China Holdings has fallen by 80% from its peak. China's benchmark CSI 300 index hit a five-year low on Monday and mutual fund closures have reached a five-year high. Hong Kong office tenants sees lower rents amid shift to quality. South China Morning Post Franklin Templeton is set to move to a larger office in Hong Kong's 2 International Finance Center, 2 IFC, as office vacancy rates rise and rents fall in the city. The asset manager, which currently has offices in Chater House, will move to a bigger office in the building that houses the Hong Kong Monetary Authority's headquarters. The move comes just a week after China Re Asset Management, a state-owned reinsurer, confirmed it would relocate to 2 IFC. Asian stocks gain as potential China rescue package lifts mood. Yahoo! Asian shares have begun to rise, due to the optimism that Chinese authorities will provide support to its stock markets, which have spiraled to multi-year lows. The MSCI's widest index of Asia-Pacific shares outside Japan rose by 0.27%, while China's blue-chip index was 0.4% lower, remaining near the five-year lows. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index rose by 1.5%, but has fallen by 8% since January. Japan ruling party weighs ban on factions fundraising parties. Yahoo! Prime Minister Fumio Kishida plans to dismantle his ruling party's factions to quell a money scandal that has seen the party's public support fall to a record low. By doing so, Kishida aims to abolish the traditional groups within the party and detach them from money and positions. The move risks angering the leaders of the two remaining major factions, which have not been accused of wrongdoing. A silver lining for Hong Kong's waste charging delay? SCMP Opinion Hong Kong's waste disposal charging scheme, which was due to start on April 1, has been delayed until August 1 due to unresolved issues. The scheme will apply to all households and businesses in the city. One listener to a radio phone-in program questioned whether wrapping takeaway food containers in a designated bag, as required by the scheme, was environmentally friendly. The delay should be used as an opportunity to improve waste management facilities and expand the recycling network, according to Edwin Lau Chae Fong, executive director of NGO The Green Earth. 
Russian linked R Evil, behind 2022 Australian cyber attack also targeted dairy farm. South China Morning Post. The notorious ransomware group R Evil, which was dismantled by Russian authorities in early 2022, has been linked to Russian hacker Alexander Ermakov, who has been named as the perpetrator of a major cyber attack on Australian insurer Medibank in 2022. Ermakov has also been linked to an attack on Hong Kong-based retailer Dairy Farm. The Australian government has named and sanctioned Ermakov and imposed a travel ban and financial sanctions on him. The government has acknowledged that targeting Ermakov will not eliminate future cybercriminal groups, as these groups are dynamic and have multiple partners. Five things you need to know to start your day, Asia. Bloomberg. Alibaba's U.S. listed shares rose 7.9% after it was reported that Jack Ma has been buying stock in the company. This follows a 38% decline in Alibaba's share price over the past year. U.S. equities reached fresh highs for the third straight day, despite warnings from the Federal Reserve that interest rate cuts are a while off. Bank of America has cut over 20 investment banking jobs in Hong Kong as deal-making in China slows. Netflix has made its first big move into live events by acquiring the exclusive rights to Raw and other programming from World Wrestling Entertainment. Racist abuse online violated Japan goalkeeper Suzuki's human rights, coach says. South China Morning Post Japan coach Hajime Moriyasu has condemned racist abuse suffered by goalie Zion Suzuki after the team's shock loss to Iraq at the AFC Asian Cup. Moriyasu said he strongly objected to those who violated the human rights of the player, who asked people to stop making racist comments. Suzuki is of Japanese and Ghanaian heritage and made his debut in a 6-0 victory over Hong Kong at the 2022 East Asian Football Championship. Moriyasu's team face Indonesia on Wednesday and a loss would be a major upset. Well, folks, that's all the news we have for today. Let's recap what we've learned. Tesla is taking its Cybertruck on a tour in China to boost sales and compete against domestic manufacturers. Hong Kong's coach believes his team is closing the gap on the big teams in Asian football. Bridgewater is bullish on Chinese stocks, despite recent market volatility. TikTok has made some job cuts as tech layoffs continue. Hong Kong stocks rallied after Alibaba saw a surge in its shares. Jack Ma and Joe Tsai have become the largest shareholders of Alibaba. Most Japanese have negative feelings towards China, according to a government poll. Hedge fund Asia Genesis Asset Management has closed after suffering large losses on wrong-way bets on Japan and China. Franklin Templeton is moving to a larger office in Hong Kong as vacancy rates rise and rents fall. Asian stocks are gaining due to optimism that China will provide support to its stock markets. Japan's ruling party is considering banning fundraising parties for factions. Hong Kong's waste charging scheme has been delayed, sparking debate about its environmental impact. The Russian-linked ransomware group R Evil has been linked to a major cyber attack on an Australian insurer and a Hong Kong-based retailer. Jack Ma's stock purchases have caused Alibaba's shares to rise. Japan's goalkeeper has been the victim of racist abuse online. Now, let me give you my take on these stories. It's no surprise that Tesla is trying to boost its sales in China, the world's largest electric vehicle market. But I have to say, taking the Cybertruck on tour seems like an interesting choice. I mean, have you seen that thing? It's certainly attention-grabbing, but I'm not sure it's going to appeal to everyone in China. As for Hong Kong's football team, it's great to see them closing the gap on the big teams in Asia. But let's not forget that they still have a long way to go. I'm sure their coach will be working hard to prepare them for their upcoming World Cup qualifiers. Now, let's talk about Bridgewater's bullishness on Chinese stocks. It seems they may have been a bit too optimistic, given the recent market volatility. But hey, that's the stock market for you. It's always a roller coaster ride. 
And speaking of roller coasters, TikTok has made some job cuts as tech layoffs continue. It's certainly a tough time for the industry, but TikTok seems to be holding its own, despite the scrutiny it has faced. Now, let's move on to Alibaba. Jack Ma and Zhou Tsai have increased their stakes in the company, making them the largest shareholders. It's a bold move, considering the recent regulatory challenges and stock price plunge. But hey, if anyone can turn things around, it's probably these guys. Now, let's talk about the poll that shows most Japanese have negative feelings towards China. It's not surprising, given the tensions between the two countries. But it's good to hear that the negative feelings are primarily aimed at the Chinese government and not the people. After all, we should always remember to separate politics from people. Finally, let's touch on the cyber attack linked to the Russian hacker group R Evil. Cybersecurity is a growing concern, and it's clear that governments and companies need to do more to protect themselves. But let's not forget that these cyber criminals are constantly evolving, so it's important to stay vigilant. Well, that's all from me today. I hope you enjoyed the news and my take on it. Now, it's your turn. What are your thoughts on these stories? Do you agree with me, or do you have a different perspective? Let's keep the conversation going in the comments. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 dobriefcom Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.